Hey traders, welcome to a Sunday Ideas. We have not done one of these in a while. We're going to start making these more of a regular thing again. Uh, hope everyone's enjoying the first week of March and enjoying their first weekend in March. It feels like spring's on the way, so that's exciting. Um, coming into today, we're going to just take a look at the news here quick. Uh, going on this week, we have the Australian dollar rate news. And then we have... Chair Powell testifying at 7 a.m. on Tuesday, which will be a market mover, followed by another speech at 7 a.m. on Wednesday, which I believe will be a bit of a market mover, along with the non-farm employment change. So uh, pretty kind of busy week. We also have the um, ECB president speaking on Wednesday in early the early morning hours here for us in the U.S. Down a little further, we get into the Bank of Japan policy rates, and then a lot of, it looks like a lot of German, or I'm sorry, some British uh, economic news. For us over here, again, another Fed speech, some unemployment claims, and then Friday's the big one, unemployment rate. So kind of a busy Newsweek speeches from all the Fed people, especially Chair Powell. And then uh, a lot of rate news coming out of the banks. And that's all setting up into, obviously, we're coming up on another CPI reading and another Fed meeting at the end of the month. So keep that in mind for next week. Should be a pretty uh, decent week. Uh, so far, March has been pretty good. So we'll see. Moving on, uh, rollovers this week. We do not have anything until it looks like in a couple of days, we'll be rolling over the currencies. So we'll be rolling to the 6A. The 6E and then the ES, obviously, probably Friday or Monday, depending on the volume. Again, the way to know that is you can pull up if you're using a Ninja Trader. We use Ninja Trader here. Uh, you can pull up your contracts. You can look at the volume when the volume switches from one to the other, then you can switch over. So be looking for those rollovers this week, quite a few of them. And then moving to the charts, why don't we start to take a look today? I think we're going to start with copper today. Uh, go to our the chart here so copper been a pretty interesting market recently um really moving well you can see here look at this movement up down up down and this week we had a real nice setup up here one for a long that we covered in class on saturday and then another opportunity for a potential short kind of tough to get into that one but definitely expected with the, with a, with the no back test here. So coming into this week, the, the real question is rotate all the way back down here for back test or hold at a level here. Possibly we might get a little bit of a hold here somewhere. Already tried once, but filled that. So push off or drop. Uh, the more likely scenario, I believe, is probably a drop for an actual back test of this uh, trend line here. And coming into the tick charts, you can see here, we're just holding. So kind of looking for a, get rid of these old trade ideas here. Kind of looking for a, another attempt at this level here, possibly even a larger V with a recovery uh, to go back up and try to run through this top. So that's kind of where we're at with uh, the copper. Again, looking, a couple ideas, looking for the, for the longs from down in this area somewhere. Again, another large kind of take out of that level and a recovery would work. And then through the top, you can see here on the <clears throat> tick chart, we have not back tested yet. So we do need that potentially. Uh, moving on to gold today. <clears throat> Friday saw gold kind of pop and wake up for us. You can see here we opened, dipped, and then ran right out of here, creating some good structural points for us to work with moving forward. And then obviously coming into this zone here, which would be a spot where we could possibly be looking for some early sellers. And this just got taken out. So this is about as easy as you can get here. So somewhere right in general in here, we'll, we'll see some sellers show up. We don't know what they'll mean, if they mean business until we see them. But uh, anywhere between here and then on top of here. So right around here is where we're actually looking potential trade here. And then obviously looking for the back test here at some point since we just shot right through there. And then wondering if we're going to be getting a recovery. Uh, this level is absolutely 100% in play this week if we can get down there. So a couple of real nice areas for trades 
on the charts here this week. And you can see them. Actually, let's add this one to all the charts. So you can see somewhere in this general area, we should get a couple opportunities in the next week or so. Um, definitely like the long from down here. So uh, back test here. So one of the ideas, right, if we run real quick up here uh, and we don't come back and back test that, absolutely looking for a short back down to here. And then if we pull back and bounce here, then we'll be looking for a, uh, a takeout of that level, then a possible recovery. Could also get a recovery here and trade back down into here, possibly lower down into here. So interesting charts in oil. Everything's kind of moving really well. Friday, man, what a day in oil on Friday. We had the large, we knew something was coming here with our yellow prints. We get the large dip and then the explosion back to the upside. So now we're right up here at this potential shoulder area. You can see the push, the fresh interest, the rally back up. And very similar to the, the move down here, move up still obviously a little stronger. We hit that equal rotation point already. So we've done the we've done our duty here. We've back tested. Everything's done with this line. And we can see if we're done with it and we're going to continue to kind of consolidate and drift here, or if we're going to uh, take this uh, open kind of pocket up here out and then re recover for a pullback to fill in some of the space. Now that move up on Friday was quite large, quite quick. Obviously it was due to some news that came out regarding the UAE, uh, which was in instantly denied, but that's kind of how it works these days. So you can see the moves here. Uh, there's the dip and the recovery. So we're absolutely wondering, you know, is it here? Is it going to be here? Let's bring this over a little bit. Uh, but general area of, of trading for a potential pullback to fill some of this in right up here. So that should come early in the week because we're already up there. Uh, if we just turn and dip down right on the open on Sunday night, then we can probably look for potential longs from down here somewhere. Uh, haven't really gone through that part of the chart yet. So for a potential continued pullback and continuation, okay? Uh, the ES, what do we say about the ES? Um, with Chair Powell speaking this week, we should get some some decent movement in this market, I believe. Uh, when we drop it to the 60 minute here, you can see same thing on Friday with this, just a huge rally right into this area that we've been waiting to back test since uh, we went, went through it on about the 21st of February. So we've come up, we've rallied to it, Got rid of this, got rid of this, get rid of this. And we finally came and back tested this. So now the question is, are we going to recover this level? Uh, it's a pretty thick level. This is from the last Fed statement here. Um, and we came and held it once, twice. And then we zoomed through. Now we're back testing. You can kind of see some of that equal rotation on the horizontal level there like that. Uh, as above, so below type situation. And now we're questioning whether or not this is going to just hold up here and then continue to rally to fill in some of the spacing over here to the left that needs to be filled. Uh, this level right here is the level to keep an eye on. I think if we fail here uh, in front of that, you could get a rollover and a pullback before we potentially another attempt up to the, to the upside. Again, it's going to really matter what uh, what comes out of the mouth of the, the chair fed pal or fed chair pal uh, this week. So, at a good area, it seems to have woken up a bit. You can see the really tough movement through here. I know some traders are really having a hard time trading that, but it seems that you know we came right to an area where we expected to get a bounce, right? We we filled it, we bounced, and now we're right back to where we expected the next spot, which is over here at our back test. So the real question again is, is it going to be a recovery? Oops. or a failure up here. And that's going to really decide kind of our next move with the failure. I think, you know, you can see here on this, if we get that failure, there, this area here really has my eye on the daily chart. So if we get that failure, you can probably expect the next move to come down into this area here. If we get the rally back up, I think we're going to try to take out this top finally, which has been holding for a while. So, Really interesting kind of inflection point in the ES right now. Uh, lots of news about rates, lots of news about inflation coming. So expect this market to probably pick up a bit. I uh, got a couple extra markets for you guys today. 
Uh, I've been really watching the bonds here as of late uh, with this sharp V that's developing. Oh, looks like my uh, LME got taken out here. That back right there. And you can see we, we're breaking above. We already back tested and now we're rallying here. So looking at this chart on, on here, we're just really kind of interested to see what happens up here. Um, very strong move to the upside. So opportunity to possibly trade up in here along with a pullback down here. So either option there on the chart for us, pretty clear where we want to be participating in this. Uh, we could also look to take, possibly take a continuation here if this move market travels away from the structural point a little further. So definitely a market that's in play this week uh, with the strength and the move here. And again, trying to rally a bit. Last but not least, today is going to be a market that I've been watching for a bit here, which is the soybeans. Um, soybeans gave us the sharp drop through this level here uh, that has been holding for I don't know, since the beginning of January. And we've recovered this level. However, we have not back tested yet, which tells us that if this market is going to rally back up and try to take out some of these highs up here, right, and possibly go into some new highs, we're going to need to potentially kind of get ourselves a back test here. And that's a great opportunity for a long, um, if we can get one. So this uh, 1500 to 1505-ish level is going to be really interesting this week to see. You can see right here, I have it all marked out. Uh, so somewhere in this area, we're looking for a pullback for a continuation to the upside. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, I think this, you know, this market has some opportunity in it this week. So in review, a couple markets that we're really keeping an eye on. And then obviously the usual suspects. Uh, some employment news coming this week, some rate news coming this week, some speeches coming this week. And then I think, I believe next week we're into the CPI numbers. So should be an interesting last, uh, or well, middle of March, I guess we'll say, uh, once again, I hope everyone's enjoying the start to the month. And if you have any questions, you can reach us at info at swingtradingacademy.com and everyone have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Thanks.